Our breaking coverage continues tonight with more reaction to the death of Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia at age 79. Joining me now is author of Stealing America, Dinesh D'Souza. Good evening, Dinesh. Thanks for being with us. Now, you actually knew uh, Justice Scalia. Can you tell us when you first met him and, and how you came to know him? Well, I didn't know him well. I actually met him through my pal, uh, Laura Ingram, who uh, I believe clerked for him. And um, so I spent uh, some time with him, and I remember uh, particularly some very engaging conversations about ways in which interpreting a constitution uh, is in some ways analogous to interpreting the Bible uh, and also interpreting literary texts. So he had a very elastic mind and was able to look at different ways in which we read a text, not just in terms of what the author intended, but also in terms of what the text actually says. And, you know, he was, given that he was an originalist and, and uh, tried very hard to look at the Constitution through the eyes of uh, the Founding Fathers uh, who wrote it, uh, it, it seems clear that he was someone who could kind of transcend <laughs> generations and, and a couple of centuries. Uh, the president... Yeah, I, you can, know, go ahead. I believe his originalism was different than, for example, the originalism of Judge Bork, because Judge Bork would talk about reading the Constitution in the light of the motives or intentions of the framers. And one of the things that Scalia would point out is that the intention of the framers is sometimes opaque or contradictory. And so, sometimes, you know, when you're reading a, a sonnet by Shakespeare, you may not know what Shakespeare intended to say, but what you do have is the sonnet itself. And by looking at the meaning of the poem, you can excavate uh, what, it actually what it actually means. And, you know, given the fact that uh, you are certainly someone who is quite conservative, uh, what do you see as the impact of Justice Scalia's uh, untimely death, not only on the court, but on the presidential election this year? Well, I must say that when I got the news, I felt a sense of deep sorrow, but also a cold, a chill of fear uh, down my spine because the Supreme Court has been so precariously balanced. Uh, it's been very frustrating for us as conservatives that the Democrats can depend uh, almost uh, with Euclidean certitude on their, on, on their guys. Their, the Democrats nominees on the court act like Democrats. Uh, on the Republican side, it's always like, gee, what's Kennedy going to do? Whoops, we got Kennedy, but we, uh, I'm sorry, we, we got Kennedy, but we lost Roberts. Roberts right. uh, and so Scalia was the intellectual leader of the conservative side of the court, and he'll be deeply missed. And he was not only the intellectual leader uh, and the man with a sense of humor and the man that uh, everyone loved to be with, including Ruth Bader Ginsburg, philosophically opposite, but, but uh, as I understand it, one of his dearest friends. I mean, he was someone who would try try to get uh, the other members of the court to join him in his decisions. I don't know, do we have a unifier like that now? Well, I think Scalia was, was an intellectual giant uh, on the court and, and perhaps the most uh, eloquent uh, Supreme Court uh, justice uh, um, uh, going back all the way to, um, uh, may, you know, maybe to the early part of the 20th century, uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes, perhaps. So I think history will see him as a luminous figure. And on the Republican side, you may have to go back to Justice Harlan, uh, who authored the famous dissent uh, uh, in Plessy, uh, to find a, a Republican justice of this caliber. And, uh, you know, we've got the, what we have to deal with now, Justice Thomas, possibly? Well, Justice Thomas Alito, of course, remains a star on the court. Uh, and, but I think what's going on is we're dealing in, with Obama, with a, with a president who has shown a willingness to skirt the law, uh, skirt the law on immigration, the Defense of Marriage Act, the uh, Obamacare. And so we need a, a Supreme Court that's going to stand up for, for constitutionalism at this moment in our history. Especially a man who was a man of faith like Justice Scalia with the uh, contraceptive mandate uh, and the Little Sisters of the Poor uh, coming up. Uh, it will be very interesting to, uh, to see what happens. I mean, final thoughts about this presidential election. Do you think that people will even consider uh, Justice's death and the impact that this election will have on the Supreme Court? I think it's important for the Republican Congress to signal very clearly to Obama that, that any nominee that he puts forward that is on the left is essentially dead on arrival, uh, that, that they are not going to confirm that kind of a nominee. And that 
forces upon Obama the choice of either pushing forward and going up in flames uh, or trying to come up with a unifying nominee that would actually help to bring the country together. All right, Dinesh D'Souza, thanks so much for joining us tonight.